I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the uh, hamlet of Finchstein, just on the uh, Hampshire and Sussex border, about five miles north of Havant. And we're going to be doing a roughly four and a half mile circular walk, starting at Finchstein, then heading north towards Idsworth and Cholton, and then back along the Sussex border path. And along the way, well, we're going to see a couple of churches, a couple of pubs, some quite stunning views. And as normally happens, I expect we'll come across something slightly unusual. So do come along with us. Now I'm filming in the middle of January. The sun is out. It's blue sky. I can't see any clouds, but it is bitterly cold. You can see we're wrapped up. Logan's got his thick coat on. I've got loads of layers on. There's still a frost on the ground. It's uh, probably still around about freezing at the moment. So we need to keep moving to keep warm, but it's going to be a beautiful winter's walk, I'm sure. Well, I've parked my car in the centre of the village at a little free car park right next to the old village pound, which is just behind me here. And this is where, in days gone by, stray animals would have been held until either the owner came and paid to get them back or they would be sold to cover the costs of impounding. And it's right next to where the old blacksmith used to be. And just in front of the pound is this sculpture. It's actually one of 20 sculptures found on the ship's rights way. I'll tell you a bit more about that later on in the walk. And this is actually number 14 of the sculptures, the binding tree. And there was once a large elm tree that used to stand in the village green here outside the smithy. And he reputedly hung his blacksmith's tools on it. But goodness me, a telephone box with a telephone in it. <laughs> OK, we're going to kick on northwards. Just to my right is the old George Inn, which dates from the 18th century. But I'll have to put a photograph up on screen later, because if I show it to you, all you'll see is the sun, because it's so low in the sky. Well, we've just left uh, Finchstein. Uh, Finchstein stands for, I think, Valley of the Finch, Old English, uh, uh, Denu and Fink. Oh, that could have been named after a chap called Fink. <laughs> so we're going to now head sort of northwards, slightly northeast actually, up the side of a hill uh, with a valley down below. We should get some cracking views. Um, just by me on the right, there's a railway line. That's the old... Uh, London to uh, Portsmouth line, so we might hear the odd train from time to time. It's quite beautiful at the moment. See, the sun's out in all its glory, and there's still quite a frost on the ground. Let's kick on. top of uh, the ridge. Good excuse for our first pit stop for a view today. Isn't that quite uh, a magnificent scene in the morning sunshine? And uh, well, basically we're going to head up into these woods here and along the ridge, uh, make our way. You can just see a little church in the far distance. Uh, Idsworth, we'll be exploring there. On to Cholton in the far distance, or Cholton should I say, and then we'll be eventually making our way back along the ridge on the far side of the valley there. But what a beautiful scene. Okay, so we're going to head on to the woods here. It's, um, we're going to be joining the Staunton Way, which is a a 20 and a half mile long distance path that goes from the Queen Elizabeth Country Park in the north to uh, 
Staunton Country Park near Haventon in the south. It's way marked with a roe deer and a green arrow. Logan's loving it in these woods, very much on squirrel patrol at the moment. Because the great thing about doing this sort of walk in the winter with uh, not so many leaves on the trees, it opens it up much more. You can see much deeper into the landscape either side. You can see the contours. It's always lovely to see the seasons go by. I know sometimes it can get a bit muddy, but it's not too bad here today. And uh, so fresh, just breathing in that cool air just invigorates you. Right, what has he gone? Oh. Ah, there he goes. <laughs> I think every squirrel has now hiding up the trees, if they've got any sense. <laughs> ah, making our way through that wood, that's just uh, where we've come down. A little bit dark because we're on the northern side. And uh, just looking down to the valley, just to tell you a little bit about this uh, house that's in front of me. I just about see it poking through the, the trees. It's Old Idsworth Garden. Uh, there was a house built here in 1613 to replace a much earlier one and it had extensive parklands and gardens including a, a walled garden. Now I don't know if you can see just behind the house going up the uh, side of the uh, the valley there, there's rows of um, trees and well back in 1725 an avenue of 200 lime trees were planted there, um, two double rows about 40 metres apart. They were destroyed at the start of the 19th century but soon replanted. Some were removed due to health and safety in the 1970s and many were lost in the storm of 1987. So there's only about 33, 35 or so still remaining, but still an impressive sight. Now going back to the house, the Clark Jarvis family who had bought the house way back in 1790, uh, well they were looking to move because it was a, a damp area and the railway was built right through the middle of the valley on their land. So they used the compensation, demolished the main house and built another impressive mansion on the other side of the hill in 1852. We might get a glimpse of that later on. But the old coach house, that was uh, converted into a farmhouse and the walled garden is still here as well. Lovely setting. Well, just to the northeast of uh, Old Idsworth Garden, is this, well, remains of an old ice house. That's quite deep. There were years gone by, there was a, a pond not too far from here that used to ice up in the winter, so presumably that's where they used to shove the ice as a train goes by in the, the far distance. Now, speaking of the pond, it appears on a, an 1897 map, but it doesn't appear on a current ordnance survey map. But I did read somewhere that they are re-establishing it. And yes, I can just uh, see it down here on my right. We can just about peep over. And well, although it's not very full, it is certainly <laughs> covered in ice this morning. Okay, well, we're gonna go out into the sunshine now and in the far distance our next destination the quite delightful Church of St Hubert 
a detour. been looking forward to visiting this church. It really is quite enchanting. St Hubert's Church. Now the earliest recorded reference to the church here is from 1053 but its foundations show evidence of a building here around 900 at least. Up until 1864 it was dedicated to St Peter or possibly St Paul but then it was changed in that year to St Hubert's and it's often referred to as the church in a field. There was an original nave and then the chancel was added in the 12th or 13th century. It's got a wooden bell turret and west porch. And there's a small 12th century arch, only about 21 inches wide on the north wall of the nave. It's now blocked off, possibly an opening to a smaller building uh, on the north side of the church, maybe a chapel but just uh, looking around, it is very much an isolated church. Any remains of Idsworth village, uh, which itself had been established uh, at, a, at least 900, is long gone. Possibly the result of the plague wiping out the population in the, the 14th century. Well, fingers crossed there's a, enough light to be able to have a look inside here. Wow. Look at that, that uh, fresco up on the wall is uh, quite recent, uh, painted to celebrate the millennium. Uh, wow. Oh, and there's the, uh, the blocked off uh, northern door. Now, this is what I wanted to have a, a look at, these fantastic wall paintings. They date from... 1330 and they were only rediscovered in 1864 and there is actually a, a framed print uh, underneath which shows it in more detail but uh, well, there are different theories as to what it actually represents uh, the bottom level there are two levels the bottom level is thought to be the final scenes of the life of John the Baptist the upper level might have had something to do with St Hubert and uh, it's that belief that caused uh, folk to change the, the name of the dedication of the church. But some experts have discounted that theory, suggesting that it actually depicts the early life of St John or possibly something to do with the, the hairy anchorite, <laughs> a sort of hairy hermit. He's the figure on all fours with a halo on the right there with a very much animal-like appearance, but hey-ho, anyway, just uh, panning around to the altar there. And uh, just looking up at the, the window at the top there, that was installed in 1913. It's St. Hubert with a stag, and I think it depicts his conversion, but look, is that a whippet at the bottom? I don't, I don't know. And then just looking up at the ceiling here again these I think there are 13 medallions of religious symbolism uh, and then just slowly moving around the organ at the back there with a little gallery and fascinating pulpit there that dates in the 17th century but as you can see it's right in the middle of the congregation a lovely little church. Well, what a delightful church that was. The sun is still out, starting to get a little bit cloudy, but just looking 
back up towards the church. There's a little bridge in front of me. Um, apparently, at times in the winter, an aeroplane goes over, um, it gets a little damp. I think there's a little stream called the Lavent that, uh, that comes up. Okay, well, we're just gonna head uh, again northwards now, actually a little bit of road work, but not too much before heading up Charlton Down. We're actually going to be on the Shipwrights Way, and I, I mentioned that right at the beginning. It's a, a 50 mile long distance path that uh, was supposed to represent the journey of an oak from Alice Holt Forest near Farnham all the way down to uh, the docks at Portsmouth. And along the way, there are 20 sculptures to look out for, all carved in creamy Portland stone by a chap called Perry. I think we've seen five of them so far uh, at various walks. We saw, what was it, the cheese snail, the Roman villa and the sheep on our walk at Berriton. And when we were at Haley Island, we saw the oyster and the little tern. So today we obviously saw our sixth one, the, uh, the tree at Finchstein. Bit of puffing and panting going on, usually means we're on an uphill stretch. <laughs> so we've now crossed the railway line. Actually, we went underneath through a little tunnel, which was fun. And we're now on the western side and we're making our way up the side of uh, Cholton Down. And when we get to the top, we should get some great views. Come on, fella. Come on. Come on. The pub's open in 15 minutes. Well, we're nearly at the summit of the ridge, but uh, just have another pit stop <laughs> to uh, look at the view. And wow, it really is very, quite breathtaking. So this is sort of looking sort of northwards. The building in the far distance is a school, I think, D Ditcham Park, something like that, it's an independent school. And then this is looking across to the other side of the the valley. I say we're, we're in Hampshire but Sussex is literally just over there and this is where we've come from. We're into Cloudover just a little bit and there's Idsworth Church just over the, uh, the top there and uh, Cholton Down where we've come from. Ah, some more views folks. This is uh, looking north. That's well the Queen Elizabeth Country Park. There's all those woods and then you can see the the uh, radio mast on the top, that's Butzer Hill, one of the uh, uh, highest uh, spots in Hampshire. And then just turning over to the east, at the top of the hill there, at the top of the appropriately named Windmill Hill, is indeed a windmill. Uh, there's been a mill up there, well, since 1289, but the present windmill was built in the 19th century. Well, just before we drop into Chalton, we're about to uh, join the Sussex border path. In fact, we'll be following that uh, on the way back to, to Finchstein. The path itself is uh, oh, about 150 miles long and uh, it follows the inland border of Sussex. So uh, it sort of uh, goes alongside the, the county boundaries with Hampshire, uh, Surrey and Kent. There are some deviations along the way. Obviously, there's private land on the border, but it basically follows uh, footpaths and tracks as near to the border as possible. So, for example, this little bit here is all going to be in Hampshire. And indeed, it's uh, way marked with a martlet, a mythical heraldic bird without feet that never actually roosts and is continually on the wing. Indeed, the, the flag of Sussex contains six gold martlets on a blue field said to represent the six historical rapes of Sussex. They were medieval administrative subdivisions that predated the Norman conquest. And this is the uh, 
quite pretty village of Cholton. In front of me, the Red Lion Pub, believed to be one of the oldest pubs in Hampshire. As you can see, it's timber framed, it dates back to the 16th century or even earlier. Uh, originally, it was a building to house the stonemason for the church here. Well, folks, we simply had to uh, have a pit stop at the Red Lion. And what a cosy place to, to end up at. Look at this uh, roaring fire behind me. And uh, his lordship has bagged the, uh, the best place in the house. <laughs> you can see I'm just uh, tucking into some soup and some chips and a pint of HSB. Oh, well, close. There you go. <laughs> oh, I think we might be here for a while. Well, that was rather pleasant. I could have quite happily stayed in there for the rest of the afternoon. A couple of things that uh, I want to show you in the village. Firstly, just next to me here, look at this quite gorgeous cottage. This is Glebe Cottage, 18th century, built of milestone, which is very similar to Flint. And I love the thatched peacock on the porch there. And uh, I just noticed halfway up the I thought it was real for a minute, but no, <laughs> I don't think it is. Logan saw it before I did. And this is the Church of St. Michael and All Angels. So the present church was built in the late 11th century or perhaps early 12th century. Certainly the design is typically Norman, but it was built on the site of a previous Saxon church. The chancel, nave and tower are the oldest parts with the south transept added in the 14th century and the north porch added in the 19th century. Well, for any folks that are going to be doing this walk after they've seen the video, I know a few people do, just one uh, little aspect to look out for on the way back. Just uh, on the Sussex border path, passing underneath some electricity pylons, you need to look out for this, um, this gate here um, because there isn't actually a a way marker for the border path on, although somebody has written in felt tip pen SBP, um, you need to go on the left hand side of this fence, you, not on the right hand side, it's an easy mistake to do. And just looking out, uh, what a beautiful scene below, there's Idsworth Church. Now, I know what you're thinking, why has it suddenly gone very dark? The problem is this time of year, there's only so much daylight and uh, well, we were in that pub just a little bit too, uh, too much longer than we were um, originally planning to. Uh, well, it was so cosy in there. I wanted to go, but I just couldn't wait, Logan. <laughs> well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We thought we'd do the end scene here at uh, St. Hubert's Church. I think it's going to be one of my favourite churches of the series so far. We hope you enjoyed the walk. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And as I always say, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. That way, hopefully, you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Good boy. <laughs>